You're listening to the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to make sure you get the latest episodes of the podcast. Be sure to like and share our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. On today's episode of the podcast, we review the second semi final of the ICC T20 World Cup for 2021 between Pakistan and Australia from the Dubai International Cricket Stadium. It's the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast, and let's get started. Let's have a look at the match summary from this second semi-final of the ICC T20 World Cup between Pakistan and Australia from the Dubai International Cricket Stadium. Pakistan batted first and made four for 176 from their 20 overs. Rizwan top scored with 67. Stark took two wickets for Australia. Australia, in reply, finished on 5 for 177 from 19 overs. Warner top scored with 49. And Khan took four wickets for Pakistan. Australia won by five wickets, and Matthew Wade was named man of the match. What were the key moments and key factors from this second semi final between Pakistan and Australia? Pakistan's batting, Mohammad Rizwan's innings of 67 and Saman's innings of 55 not out, were important for Pakistan reaching 176 from their 20 overs. Pakistan's bowling, taking early wickets and at regular intervals to have Australia 5 down for 96 inside 12.2 overs. Marcus Stoinis and Matthew Wade's partnership of 81 not out for the 6 wicket was the key for Australia, chasing down the runs to win by 5 wickets. Those were the key moments and key factors from this second semi-final between Pakistan and Australia. Let's have a look at both teams' performances with both bat and ball in this second semi-final. We'll start with Pakistan and their batsmen, Rizwan 67, Azam 39, Zaman 55 not out, Asif Ali 0, Malik 1, and Hafiz 1 not out. That's how Pakistan's batsmen performed in this second semi-final against Australia. I thought Pakistan's batting was good in this semi-final against Australia. Mohamed Rizwan and Babar Azam's opening partnership didn't quite get off to a flyer as they usually do. They added 71 for the first wicket, which set the platform for Pakistan to reach their 176 score. Mohamed Rizwan's innings of 67 was very important for Pakistan, and he played the anchor-type role for Pakistan, and took it upon himself to ensure Pakistan got a competitive total, which they did in the end. He was in bad shape heading into this match due to some sort of infection. He was in hospital for a couple of days, but he was able to recover and play really well for Pakistan in a T20 World Cup semi-final. The partnership he had with Saman of 72 for the second wicket was also handy for Pakistan as well in their innings. In the end, Australia chased down 176 and maybe Pakistan could have put the foot down a lot earlier in their innings and should have aimed to get 180 to 190, which would have been difficult to chase down, especially in the semi-final where the team chasing has that pressure when chasing a big total. So maybe if Pakistan were able to accelerate a lot earlier in the innings, they may have got to that 180 score, 190 score, and that would have been enough to win this semi-final. In the end, 176, they would have been happy with that. And I thought they batted really well. I thought Rizwan's innings, obviously he's been through a lot. Um, He was in hospital for a couple of days. I thought he played a really gutsy innings. Um, He's a very talented player, Rizwan. He's got a lot of skills, and he's going to be a great player for Pakistan going forward. Um, Babar Azam, what can you say about him? His innings was very good as well. Uh, 39 he made. He contributed well to the team. And Saman, 55 not out. Uh, some brilliant striking from Saman there uh, to contribute to Pakistan's effort with the bat in this semi final. So overall, it was a good batting display from Pakistan as it has been throughout this T20 World Cup. Let's have a look at Pakistan's performance with the ball in this second semi final against Australia. Hafiz didn't take any wickets, along with Wazim, Hassan Ali, and Ralph. A wicket for Afridi and four wickets for Khan. That's how the Pakistan bowlers went about things in this second semi-final against Australia. I thought Pakistan's bowling was good up front in the Australian innings. They were able to put Australia under pressure by taking wickets early. They had Australia five down for 96 inside 12.2 overs. And Pakistan looked like winning this game quite easily. They bowled really well. Their lines and lengths were consistent. They were executing their skills with the ball early on. 
But the partnership between Marcus Stornis and Matthew Wade is where the game started to turn in favour of Australia. Towards the back end of the innings, that's where Pakistan struggled with the ball. Australia was starting to get back into the game with the Stornis and Wade partnership. The 19 further is where the game was won and lost with Pakistan in this match. Australia needed 22 of 12 balls, a tough ask, but if Pakistan bowled a good over, they were on their way to winning this semi-final. Afridi bowled the last over and he didn't quite execute with the ball. His lines and lengths were inconsistent, didn't quite execute his plans for the ball. He went for 22 runs off his over. A dot ball, a leg by, a wide, two and three sixes in a row. This one over changed the game, just like in the England and New Zealand semi-final where Jordan bowled that over, and that changed the course of that match. And the same thing happened against Pakistan and Australia. This 19th over changed the course of the match. Hassan Ali dropped Matthew Wade on the third ball of the over, and Wade smashed three sixes in a row to win the game for Australia. Pakistan, their lines and lengths were inconsistent to Stornis and Wade, didn't quite execute their skills with the ball. And that's what happened with Pakistan uh, when Stornis and Wade came in. They didn't quite hit their lines and lengths. They weren't quite consistent because Stornis and Wade were able to get in and get set. They were scoring runs. They hit the odd boundary. And Pakistan, you could sense the pressure building. And they weren't able to cope with the pressure, especially in the 19th further, where... Australia just smashed 22 off the last over and Matthew Wade played some extraordinary shots to finish off the game for Australia. Um, and obviously Hassan Ali dropped that catch. The pressure was building. You could sense that because every run that Stornis and Wade got and every run that Australia got closer and closer to Pakistan's target, you could sense Pakistan were a bit under pressure and sort of a bit panicky, I think. And that's where... Pakistan didn't really quite execute under pressure. The pressure probably got to them a little bit. The expectations of winning this semi-final, being one of the favourites, of course, um, and especially when the match was going down to the wire, um, they just didn't quite execute under pressure. Um, obviously, this is a, a negative outcome for Pakistan. Obviously, they would have liked to win. So it's very hard to take a few things out of this game that are positives, but I, I like to look at the positives. And the one positive that I think will benefit Pakistan is Afridi himself. Now, Afridi bowled the over, which went for 22 runs. He didn't quite execute under pressure. Now, we've got to remember Afridi's a young bowler. Um, he's only been playing for a few years, so he's learning his craft. And... For him, he will take a lot out of this experience. Even though he'll be upset that he didn't quite do his best with the ball and he, he uh, didn't quite execute under pressure. But I think for him, it's very important to learn from this performance and to build on this. And hopefully for him, this will put him in good stead, make him a better cricketer and a better bowler going forward. So whenever he's in this position again, uh, bowling the last few overs of the innings, or if Pakistan are in a semi-final again, he will be able to draw on this experience that he had against Australia um, in that situation, if he comes up in that situation again in the future. So I think that's the one positive that he can take out of this difficult situation, of course. Um, with the Hassan Ali drop catch... Um, Yes, catches with matches, as the old saying goes, but I don't think we should blame Ali for this drop catch. There's a lot of other factors that um, contributed to the result. Um, Pakistan's bowling to Stornis and Wade when they came in uh, together at the crease was a bit poor. They, they were inconsistent, didn't quite hit their lines and lengths, didn't quite put the pressure on Stornis and Wade because Stornis and Wade were able to score runs and get in and get set and were able to get the job done for Australia. So we, we, we can't blame Ali solely on this drop catch. No one means to drop a catch. It happens. And when you're under pressure, players tend to make errors. And obviously we saw it with Afridi. Didn't quite hit his lines and lengths with the ball. Didn't quite execute his skills under pressure. And for Hassan Ali and for every fielder, when the ball comes to you in that situation, you are under pressure. And for him, he just dropped the catch. It's, it's just the way it is. Um, he made an error. 
but what I did like about Pakistan and what I've noticed from them in this World Cup, and that's why they've been playing really good cricket, is that they support one another. And everyone went over to Hassan Ali and patted him on the back and said, hey, it's okay, it's fine, it's not your fault, you haven't let anyone down. And that's the important thing here, he hasn't let anyone down. Um, it was just the pressure, um, didn't quite catch the ball into his hands, obviously he hit his hands and bounced out. But uh, that's what I liked about Pakistan, is that they support one another and they've really bonded as a team and they really back up their teammates. And that's what I like to see uh, from any cricket team. But that's what I liked about Pakistan when Hassan Ali dropped that catch. They all supported him and say, hey, it's okay, it's fine. You know, it's a game at the end of the day and you've got to, you've got to pay acknowledgement to Stornis and Wade because they played an outstanding innings, both of them. And Wade did an unbelievable job finishing off the innings for Australia. And Pakistan will learn a lot from this experience going forward as a team. And that's the one positive they can take out of this match. Overall, it was a good bowling performance from Pakistan up front. But towards the end of the match, they didn't quite execute. Overall, it was a good effort from Pakistan in this semi-final against Australia. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be. But this Pakistan team and their fans should be proud of what they have achieved in this T20 World Cup. Let's have a look at Australia's team performance with both bat and ball in this second semi-final against Pakistan. We'll start with their batsmen. Warner, 49. Finch, 0. Marsh, 28. Smith, 5. Maxwell, 7. Stornis, 40 not out. And Wade, 41 not out. That's how the batsmen performed for Australia in this second semi-final against Pakistan. I thought Australia's batting in, the, in this semi-final was poor at the start of the innings. Losing wickets early and at regular intervals, which put Australia under pressure in the run chase. Australia were one for one inside the first over, losing Finch and were in a bit of trouble early on. The partnership between David Warner and Mitchell Marsh of 51 for the second wicket got Australia back and running in the run chase. But once Marsh got out for 28, the wickets started to fall. Smith got out for five, then Warner for 40, and Maxwell for seven. Australia's only hope of winning this semi-final lied with Marcus Nornis and Matthew Wade. When they came together at the crease at 5 for 103, Australia, they needed 74 runs to win from 42 balls. Stornis and Wade kept Australia in the game with their partnership. They got Australia within 22 runs needed off the last two overs. Australia were able to score the runs with Matthew Wade hitting three sixes in a row in the 19th over, which was bowled by Afridi to win the game for Australia. The pair added 81 not out for the sixth wicket, which was a match-winning partnership. Um, what a partnership it was. Uh, it was brilliant batting from Wade and Stornis. Um, I just want to talk about Matthew Wade's innings um, and what I liked about it. He's 41 not out of 17 balls. His innings reminded me of Michael Hussey's innings when he scored 60 not out of 24 balls in that T20 World Cup semi-final against Pakistan in 2010 in the West Indies, in that run chase at Australia 1. So Matthew Wade channeled his inner Michael Hussey in this game, and he batted superbly, Matthew Wade. A lot of people have written him off. A lot of people doubted his abilities to finish games off for Australia, questioned his spot in this T20 side. But he showed everyone that he can still get the job done, and this was an amazing innings. He played the innings of his career, basically, in T20 cricket. And Matthew Wade will be remembered for this innings for a very long time. Um, what I did like about him was that he backed himself. He believed in his abilities. Um, he didn't panic. He coped with the pressure well. And he just got the job done. And he believed that Australia could win. And he, and he got the job done. It was unbelievable batting from Matthew Wade. It really was. And I thought... The Stornis and Wade partnership. What impressed me the most about this partnership between Stornis and Wade it was, was how they were able to cope with the pressure. They didn't panic. They kept calm and knew what they needed to do. That was not to get out, obviously. And they needed to score most of the runs for Australia to win um, this match. And they did. The one thing that I want to touch on and talk about is the self-belief um, factor. Is that Stornis and Wade believed that they could win. And that's what you need as a cricketer. You need to believe that you can win from any position. Um, most people would have said, oh, Australia five down for 103. 
needing 74 runs of 42 balls. Of course, they're not going to win this match. Most people would dismiss that and say, oh, they've got no chance. I hate it when players um, tend to not believe and give up. That's not an option. It's a semi-final. You've got to play your best for your country. Stoinis and Way did that. They believed. They said, right, if we get in, get set, we got to be the guys to get the runs and get the team over the line. They stood up where it mattered the most. And they backed themselves under pressure to get the runs. And they did. And it was just a, an amazing batting display. That's all I can say. There's not too many words to describe this batting performance. But it was absolutely brilliant. Um, I thought David Warner's innings was the key as well to this run chase for Australia. And his role should not go unnoticed. Obviously, Wade and Soinus have stolen a bit of the limelight, but we should also acknowledge David Warner's contribution to this match as well, and Mitchell Marsh's contribution as well. I thought David Warner's innings was key. Uh, when Australia were uh, losing wickets early and wickets were falling around him, he scored the runs and kept Australia in the game, and the partnership he had with Marsh was key as well to Australia uh, eventually winning this game. The one concern I still have with Australia is their consistency. And it's been a problem for them in T20 cricket, not backing up their performances. Now, in this match, Australia lost early wickets early. Um, Australia can't keep losing wickets early in the innings. Otherwise, they are going to be under pressure like we saw in this semi-final against Pakistan. They can't afford to lose early wickets in the final against New Zealand. Um, what we've seen from Australia in this T20 World Cup, when Warner and Finch are firing and getting the team off to a good start, um, and not losing wickets early, Australia looked like a better batting side. But when they start to lose wickets early, and you lose Warner and Finch early, then you start to lose those wickets. Then there's a lot of pressure from the rest of the batsmen to get the runs. Now, Australia were able to get out of uh, trouble in this match against uh, Pakistan in the semi-final, but... Going forward to the final, they can't afford to lose early wickets. Otherwise, they're just going to be under pressure. So that's one thing that Australia needs to work on heading into the final against New Zealand. Overall, it was a poor performance with the bat from Australia early on in the run chase. They were put under pressure and had no chance of winning this match. But they managed to find a way to win this match from nowhere. All thanks to a brilliant partnership from Marcus Stornis and Matthew Wade. Let's talk about Australia's bowling performance in this second semi-final against Pakistan. A wicket for Cummins and Zampa. Two wickets for Stark. No wickets for Maxwell and Hazelwood. That's how the Australian bowlers performed in this second semi-final against Pakistan. I thought Australia's bowling and fielding performance in this semi-final against Pakistan was Australia's worst performance in this T20 World Cup so far. Australia's bowling up front in the Pakistan's in Pakistan's innings was good. They did well to keep Pakistan at bay, and Pakistan didn't really get away from them in terms of runs early on in the innings. But towards the back end of the innings, they started to go for runs as Pakistan were looking to put the foot down. Australia were inconsistent in their lines and lengths, didn't quite execute their skills or plans for the ball. They bowled a lot of full tosses. They bowled a lot of wides and no balls, which cost them extra, extra runs, extra deliveries. And Pakistan were able to attack that poor bowling and were able to get 176 from their 20 overs. Also, it was a bit sloppy in the in the field as well from Australia in this semi-final against Pakistan. They dropped three catches, I think. Warner dropped one. Smith dropped two. Sampa dropped one, I think. So that's something that Australia needs to tidy up heading into the final against New Zealand. Also, the other thing is that Australia didn't keep the pressure on Pakistan throughout the innings. They struggled to pick up wickets at regular intervals throughout the innings, and weren't able to slow Pakistan's momentum down. Overall, it was a poor performance with the ball and in the field from Australia. They will need to improve their bowling, especially their consistency with their lines and lengths, and fielding heading into the final against New Zealand. Overall, it was a fantastic win by Australia. Despite being under pressure throughout the run chase and looking like they were no chance to win this match, they did well to find a way to win this semi-final, all thanks to a good partnership between Marcus Stornis and Matthew Wade. Where to now for both teams in this ICC T20 World Cup for 2021? For Pakistan, this semi-final loss against Australia ends their T20 World Cup for 2021. It's been a good T20 World Cup for Pakistan, going undefeated in the Super 12 stage and qualifying for the semi-finals. 
Unfortunately, they couldn't get the job done against Australia in this semi-final, but they should be proud of their efforts and will come back bigger and stronger for the 2022 T20 World Cup in Australia. For Australia, they continue on in this T20 World Cup as they go through to play New Zealand in the T20 World Cup final and have an opportunity to win their first ever T20 World Cup. Overall, what a game of cricket we have seen between Pakistan and Australia. What a comeback from Australia, being under pressure in the run chase and with no chance of winning this match. With their backs against the wall, they managed to find a way to win. All thanks to a match-winning partnership between Marcus Stornis and Matthew Wade. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell to get the latest episodes of the podcast. And like and share our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Until next time, keep safe and bye for now.